Hi friends, it's Michelle or Quimby Cottage Knits. You can find me on Ravelry at MK Hansen or on Instagram as Quimby Cottage. I just want to say hi. It's been a long time since we've talked and I have a lot of things to talk to you about, but not all of it is knitting. So I thought I would start by telling you that it is 55 degrees, I think, today. I'm north of the 45th parallel right now in our summer cottage in Petoskey, Michigan. And I'm wearing my Stash Dive Raglan by Summerly Knits, which I love. It's super cozy. I've been wearing it. I've worn it. I wore it some, I think, last week. I don't wear it as much, but I will soon be wearing it quite a bit. We do have, today's a sunny day, and so if I was in the sun, I would feel quite warm. But it is starting to cool off a little bit, which is nice because I do really love fall here. Um, some of the trees are just starting to turn and it's very beautiful. And once the colors really show, I'll take my camera out and take a few videos of the beauty around here. We're really lucky because we do live near the lake and I walk the lake every day. So I'll insert a few pictures here. There's kind of rolling hills not that far from us also. Those are created by the kettles. Those are leftover rubble that the glaciers left when they left here. I know that's more than you need to know about where I live, but I just want you to say that if you've never been in Northern Michigan before, I do hope you find your way here. It is beautiful here. It is good for you to be here and see all the beauty here. And I recently learned a little known fact about Michigan. After California, Michigan has the widest variety of agriculture in the United States. So that was new to me. I didn't know that. That's enough of the history lesson. Okay. Sorry, friends. I was talking to you and Mr. Hansen came trotting out of the cottage and was like, hey, and I think he thought I had company. Didn't know it was just you guys. So sorry about that little blip. I wanted to show you what I have been finished a couple of podcasts ago. I showed you that I felted together a ball of scrap yarn and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but I knew that I wanted to use it all for one project if I could. I do have a small ball left over. I don't know what I'll do with it. As it's been getting cold here, I do have, I don't know why I don't have more. Well, actually I do know why I don't have more. We just started staying here later into the season because the kids are at college. So we don't have to go back now according to the school schedule. And I really have not done a good job of building up choices, warmer choices for these fall days and then the early spring days. We don't have a lot of space here, so I don't really have a lot of room to do that, but I, I could figure some things out, and I think I'm going to have to do that because I don't have a lot of choices. I did have a striped hat that I made just out of scraps, and I left it here for cold days, and it's fine, but it does have some alpaca in it, and I am allergic to alpaca. It's terrible. When I feel it on my forehead, I get like a rash, and it feels super prickly, like it's like if I was wearing a scarf of it, it would feel like I was sleeping with a hedgehog. Like, it's very prickly to me. But I really thought the hat was cute, and I didn't wear it that often, so I thought I would just make it work. Well, with that ball of scrap yarn, I decided to make this. This is wool, which is great, because that's what I need. And it's warm and fine. It's made of the wool stock. I just felted that together. I don't care that this isn't perfect. I know some knitters would care that it's not perfect, but I don't. If I wanted it perfect knitted with like jogless stripes, I should have left all of the yarn separate and then just striped it as I went, but I didn't do that. So when I felted it together, you'll see there's like some blips of color here where you can see, I don't know if you can see right there. You can see that I felted together this color and this color and they kind of made a, like a blip. And there are several places like you can see here, Although actually that is where I, I dropped this blue stitch and so I just did some duplicate stitch in there to catch it. Didn't notice until I have to wear it about four, four times. But you can see here is another one where I blipped the colors. Here's another one. So I'm fine with it not being perfect. It's warm. I It's entirely made of scraps, which you know I love to do. And then it just, it's a little bit slouchy, which is perfect. And I can wad all my hair up inside it if I want to. And I have actually worn this quite a bit. Tomorrow night, we're going to go to the UP to watch a high school football game. Yes, we're going to do that. I wonder what that's going to be like. And I will definitely be wearing this. So I finished this. This is just a scrappy hat, but I did use the math for Jared Flood's turn a square hat, uh, which means at the top when you do the decreases, there are four 
even decreases so you can see that there's a square at the top. It's kind of cute. I like that pattern a lot. It's reliable. It's free. It has excellent technique in it. If you're looking to try to do a tubular cast on for the first time, I don't know if you can see, I did do a tubular cast on here. See how it just kind of, so I, I like that pattern a lot. It has great technique and the math on it always works for the heads that I'm knitting for. So I just like that it's a good, reliable hat pattern and the knitting of it is fairly simple. The decreases are great. I just, I'm a big fan of it. So I highly recommend that. I also finished a skiff hat and I gifted it already. So I will put a video in here. I made one, you remember last time, and I did it in the Lucky Tweed by Kelborn Knits, Kelborn Woolens yarn. And I really like that yarn. That was for a man. And I like that tweedy feel to it. I thought it was a little bit rustic. I loved knitting with the yarn. I think it's going to be great. And I really think I would like a sweater out of it. I can highly recommend the yarn. But this other one that I just made is for a lady. And she lives in Ohio. So I... I decided to make it red for her, Ravelry Red, the Malabrigo Rios, which I also really love. That I love that red. To me, that's just the perfect red. Honestly, I have at home a ball of the Rasta in that color, and I use it as ribbon on Christmas presents because I just love it so much, and that thick Rasta is just a great substitute for ribbon. And then you can just felt it back together and use it again. I love that. So... I knitted that for her and gifted it already. Another thing that I have been working on are these dish scrubbies. So I think it was Leslie Friend who made some on our car trip and they looked so cool. These, this isn't the best one to show you. This one is the best one to show you. This is literally just a long strip of knitting and then it's folded artfully and it makes this great great scrubby which I love so it's called the Tawashi pattern and I love it so I knit it I went to she bought her yarn I think at Hobby Lobby so I immediately did the same thing with the coupon and I bought this yarn and also this yarn they're both made for dish scrubbies my plan is to use these as stocking stuffers I'll darn it I just realized that my older daughter watches this podcast and she's gonna see these so I was going to use these with stocking stuffers. I initially, when I was buying the fat, the yarn, I liked this yarn better because it looks scratchier. It's kind of that eyelash looking yarn and it's very plastic and it has a real crinkly feel to it. And so I thought this would make the best one. This made eight um, scrubbies. I gave one away already to one of the kids' friends, but I have eight of these, seven of these now. And that was one ball made seven. Yeah, this yarn is the Scrubology 2.0. I didn't like it. I didn't like knitting with it. I have not tested these out to see if they, if one of them is a better dish scrubby than the other, because I don't care. I'm not buying this yarn again. I did like this yarn to knit. Also, this is a lot thicker, so I only was able to make three out of one ball of yarn. They're, they feel thicker and more substantial to me. This feels kind of thin and wimpy, like see how they kind of, they're floppy. This is definitely not floppy. See that? Like moves a little bit, but not, not much. So I, I like these better. I like the way they feel in my hand. I liked knitting them a lot better. I don't know if they work better than the others, but I think I'm going to buy one more ball of this and make three more scrubbies because I think they're great gifts. To be honest with you, this isn't so scratchy that you could only use it on dishes. You might be able to use this like as an exfoliator in your shower for your yourself if you wanted to. So anyway, I did like knitting these a lot. And what I like about them is that they're such an unusual shape. And I liked knitting them and then just kind of artfully folding them together. And then you sew them in the end. So here's one of my seams. See that right here? So it's a little wonky and not perfecty perfect, but I do, it's handmade. So I'm okay with that. I did also do a little bit of sewing. And so I sewed these little lavender sachets. There's a lavender farm not that far from here and someone gifted me a big bag, well like a coffee size bag, a small coffee size bag of lavender and so I made these little sachets and I just bought some, I bought a fat quarter that is purple and then I filled it, cut all the way around and then I cut it with my little rickrack scissors and I just think it's great. So I have one in all my knitting. I don't need one in this box. 
of dish scrubbies, but I stuck one in there anyway because it's okay if it smells good, right? I knit these for Natalie Sheldon at Remembrances Pottery. She designed these socks. Aren't they amazing? I love them so much. These are called the Festivity Socks. They're fantastic. You can choose to do just this part if you want or down below. To be honest, the pattern has a clothesline with socks and sweaters. I think the pattern is several patterns in one. It's very well priced for what you get. There are several different charts in it that you can choose from. So you can do, you know, whatever you want. But I just thought these were so cute. So I made these a little bit longer than my foot because I really thought that my daughter, Sabine Hansen, would love these the best. And she's going to be 21 at the end of the month. So I thought I would make these for her. She already knows about them because she modeled them, but I just think that they turned out really cute and I wanted you guys to see how great they are. I love them a lot. Now, she is a sailor and so I have plans. I bought the yarn, but I haven't cast on yet. But I have plans to remake these with the colors, the nautical colors of flags. So that's red, um, red, navy, a bright blue, yellow, white. So I thought I would do some like that. I looked, I thought I could maybe do some duplicate stitch on here to duplicate some of the flag signals, but there's not very many stitches across here. Like this flag only has one, two, three, four. It has like five stitches in this flag. I think it would be really hard to add like a little square inside that or a little circle inside that in duplicate stitch. So I think I'm just going to make them like this, but in more nautical colors, but I just love them. And one of the things I love about Natalie's things is that these socks, these color work socks really let you use up your scraps. So if you knit a pair of solid socks or a pair of patterned socks and you end up with, you know, 20 grams left over, you can easily do this with just a few balls of scraps. And each of these could be a different color. They don't have to be what they are. This yarn didn't use that much. I have a project page on my Ravelry where I weighed all of the yarn so you'll know exactly how much I used. This orange marigold color, that was scrap and so was the navy. I think the white might have been scrap too but I can't remember. I did buy these other colors. I can't remember why but I did. I will say, Natalie last year came out with the most perfect Advent socks. They're amazing. I loved them. I loved knitting them. I love the idea of knitting a little bit every day during Advent and then having a treat at the end. I really like the idea of knitting mindfully for a short time during that time, that season of our lives. It's, you know, dark. It can be a hard season for us if we have family nearby or we don't. And... I remember last year, part of the biggest thrill that I had of the season was just balling up all of my scraps and putting them all in a ball and selecting and I put some colors together and then I reselected colors. It was just a really fun way to, to spend my season. So this year, my plan is not to overextend myself at Christmas and make myself available for the Advent socks again. And if you're the kind of person who likes to fiddle around with that stuff, you might want to be looking in your stash for some scrap yarn too because it was really fun to do and we could do it together. That's all I finished. Now let's talk about what I'm working on. My friend Kathy who got the red skiff hat, I decided that I really wanted to make she and her husband to make her and her husband matching hats. But he is a lot more plain. So I'm knitting this hat in the same Ravelry red this is the 1898 hat. It is put out by the Siemens Church Institute. It's on Ravelry, and then there's a link to a website. This is fantastic. For one, this ear section is doubled, and it's kind of genius the way they put it together. And then there's this beautiful edge right here. So this is very genius. I love the construction of this. I love how squishy this feels. My back edge here, I am stranding two balls of yarn because this is a hand dye and I didn't know how much yarn this would use this double layer I didn't want to run out of yarn so I'm stranding so it's a little like wonky here that's going to block out and then I did when I did my seam I did it so that the seam shows right here I haven't decided if I want to take that out or not I, it would be fussy to take out because this is knit in one piece and then I picked up this 
so I still could rip this out if I wanted to. To be honest, I sort of don't think it's that big of a deal that I have this little blip, but I do, gosh, watch me agonize over this now. If I don't take it out, then there's for sure a back to the hat, which I'm okay with. If I do take it out and I'm able to figure out, I don't know if I have the brain space for this right now. I think I'm, uh, I don't know if I, can I give a gift like this with this little blip in the back? Do you think if I block it, it won't be so noticeable? How oh, darn it. Hmm, I have to think about it. Anyway, I'm now to the decreases of the hat. So I'm pretty happy with this, except for this one little bit that I have to figure out. I like this hat a lot. I like how warm it is down here. I feel like it's really great. If you were knitting this for a woman, well, you could knit it for anybody, but what I like about it is that it's really plain. And so this would be a great canvas if you wanted to practice some embroidery or something like that. This, this plain part you could jazz up quite a bit if you wanted to do that my friend is not going to want that but I do love this a lot I think I'm going to knit this I could see myself knitting this many times over for many different people what I will also say about this is the Siemens Church Institute I really like that group they have a, an event called um, Christmas at Sea and they this is a charity group and what they do is they support the Mariners Service Agency so all those all things that are like shipped, and we kind of joke for, on the slow boat from China, all of that stuff is shipped by men who, primarily men, who work on those ships. And it's cold, and there's a lot of storms at sea, and it's cold and wet, and it's real. it can be really harrowing. My husband was in the seafood business for a while, and he was on those fishing boats before. If you've seen movies like The Perfect Storm or read that book, that's real. The What you watch, those fishermen go through is real and it's very harrowing and so anyway I really like the idea that some that we could be knitting for them and one thing that they do also if we can't knit for them there's a bunch of patterns that are available which I like they are knit and crochet one of the great things about knitting this for charity is that you can use any yarn you want you can use any yarn you want but they just recommend that you tell them what it's for. You don't have to use, you can use a wool acrylic blend if you want. You can use 100% wool, which I like. I prefer to knit with 100% wool if I can. I also think it's warmer. I know it's warm when it's wet, so it's better for people at sea. There are lots of different patterns. They're all really practical, clean lines, classic patterns, so they're good for anybody. And I like that the patterns are available for free. So. If you want to knit for that, it's called the Christmas at Sea program, and they want you to mail your things in the fall if you can. They put together little packages for the Mariners, and they give them soap, toothpaste, lotions, and other th chapsticks, things that they might need at sea. So if you don't feel like you have time to knit, but you do have a little bit of money that you'd like to donate, you can certainly do that as well. My grandfather was in the Coast Guard during the war and World War II. And I've always had kind of a soft spot about that. And when we lived in New Bedford, Massachusetts, I met a lot of sailors. It's a very respectable, it's a very hardworking, respectable job. It's like farmers. Those, those people are out there doing the hard work for us. So I think I might like to honor my grandfather by involving myself a little bit in this charity. So if you want to do that too, the patterns are available on Ravelry. I would encourage you to, to look at some of those. And some of the patterns are not quite as involved as this one, the 1898 hat, but I really like this a lot. And I just could see that this would be really useful. Also the techniques in it, just the, it's fun to knit because it's kind of ingenious the way that you're building it. So I really think that that's great. The last thing that I have been knitting on is just a pair of vanilla socks. Here's one. This is an opal. I think it's, um, it's an opal tropical ball that I picked up at a little yarn shop in the UP. And this is just Patton's Croy in the muslin colorway. I have been watching Summer Lee Knits. She just started a podcast, but I've been a fan of hers on Ravelry for a while. And I think her socks look so charming. And then she said one of the secrets is she just, you know, uses this Patton's Croy muslin. So I went out in search of it. I looked a couple of different times, couldn't find it. And then I finally scored three balls. So that was great. I think at Michael's maybe I can't remember it feels 
a this yarn, this Patchens Proy feels slightly thicker than the this yarn. I think the Patchens Proy might be sport-ish and the Opal is a little thinner. It's definitely fingering. But I think where you're using it is probably really actually great for the sock. So I did this. Now, the problem is when I started knitting this sock, I wasn't for sure who it was going to be for. I thought it might be for a friend. And then I thought it might be for my daughter. Both of them have feet a little larger than mine. Then I took it to an event and I was knitting away and I wasn't paying attention. So I definitely sailed past the length that it would be for any normal human. And I tried it on. And then I decided I haven't had a new pair of socks in a really long time. So I decided they'd be for me. I agonized at first I was going to, I was already here, just about to kitchen or the toe when I tried it on. So initially I was going to pick up stitches like somewhere here and then cut out about an inch. And then I thought, what is wrong with me? So I ended up just ripping it all the way back as much as I needed to. And then I just re-knit the toe. So that's, I don't know why I make things hard. And then I started the second sock. So I'm not, I'm not quite to the heel, but I'm getting pretty close as you can see, not too far. It doesn't matter when I get them finished. They'll be finished eventually, and then they'll be cute, and I'll put them on my feet, and I will be toasty warm, and it will be great. That's all the knitting that I finished. But I also made my first quilt. It was a big deal. The long story is that my youngest daughter last year asked if I would take some t-shirts that she had to make a t-shirt quilt, and I was like, I don't know, maybe. We'll see. I didn't do it last year. I just didn't have it in me. But I have a friend here who is a quilter. She's made lots and lots of quilts and lots and lots of t-shirt quilts. She convinced me that if I decided I wanted to do it, I could do it with her and that she would guide me. So I made it. It's here in my lap. It's wonderful. I have a short video of it here so you can see it all. I learned a lot making the quilt. So the first thing I learned is that stitching in the ditch, which is where you stitch where the two fabrics go together, is really hard. There are a lot of places on this quilt where I went just over on either side. So I found that to be really hard. And I think the secret to stitching in the ditch really well is perfect ironing. And while I did iron in between all of my steps here like I was supposed to, I really think I should have ironed a little better. So... If I decided to quilt again, I would definitely press better. Also, I might decide instead of trying to stitch in the ditch, I might just pick just the outside or just the inside of the squares to stitch because it was really hard to stitch in the ditch. And I'm not a perfectionist, but I do like to do things well. And I will tell you, it's just, it's not even close to perfect, but it's, you know, homemade. So I learned Stitching in the dish was hard. I learned ironing is really important. I learned the cutting is really important. If you want your sewing to be straight and you're following a guide on your sewing machine, that your cutting has to be perfect too, which isn't something I didn't already know, but I didn't realize how perfect it really needs to be if you want it to be really sharp. I think it doesn't show up in my t-shirt quilt, but my friend was putting together a pinwheel quilt and she was showing me how precise her sewing is for those and for those points to come together in a pinwheel. I think definitely the cutting has to be perfect as well. Another thing that I learned that I'm kind of surprised that I learned is that, well, first let me back up. Sewing masks taught me that I do not like the process of sewing, but I do like the end result. I like the feeling of knowing that I can make my family something useful something practical. I like knowing that my skills are being put to use for my family and the people that I love. So I, I do feel a lot of pride and warmth for that, but I do not like actually sewing. I don't like sitting there and like feeding it through. I don't like the ironing of the thing. Actually, I don't mind ironing, but I don't, I don't like the cutting. I, there's a lot of the process that I don't like. However, here's what I love about making a quilt. Just like knitting, you're controlling every piece of every layer. So the t-shirts I couldn't control, obviously those were my daughter's t-shirts, but I chose a cotton yarn. I chose a flannel backing because I wanted it to be toasty. And then I chose the inside is a cotton and wool blend, which I really loved. And 
I just love that you can control every aspect of it. In the end, this is a really nice quilt and I'm really proud of it. Okay, sorry, we got interrupted. So let's hope this is kind of continuous seeming. Anyway, the quilt. So I learned a lot. Now, because I learned how to do this from a friend, I did it exactly the way that she told me to. And there were some things that were a little bit hard. So the binding, which is the edge of the quilt that goes all the way around the edge, it's that thin strip of fabric that holds all the padding in. My friend recommends that we sew that on with the machine and then when we turn it, we hand stitch it. And I know some of you might be saying, that's weird. Why would you suddenly move to hand stitching when every other piece of that has been done on a machine? I feel you, but I did it the way I was instructed. So yesterday I literally spent nine hours sewing that, which works out to be two hours and 15 minutes per side of hand stitching. I think I did a beautiful job. I'm really proud of it. Here, let me show you. Like, so this is the machine side. Oh, whoops. There's like a thread still here. I just think I'm going to be finding those forever. Okay, so this is the machine stitch side. And this is the side that I hand stitch. Can you see that, friends? Can you see that? Like, look, I really did a beautiful job. But here's what I learned. Nine hours of that. This finger right here is kind of sore. I don't know if you can see it's like right there. I did wear a thimble on it for a little while. It's a super cute thimble, but you know, thimbles go by size and it was a little bit too small. So it wasn't that comfortable. I kept taking it off. In the end, I, I have a little sore spot right here. And if I think if I was doing another one, I would probably eventually have a little callus right there. But for right now, that's that. So I'm going to mail it, but before I do, I wanted to put a little tag on it. So in this bottom corner right here, this is the back and it's flannel because our family loves flannel. I embroidered this little piece. So this is a piece from the sleeve of one of her t-shirts and I put her initials across the top, 2020, and then mom with a heart instead of an O. I hope she loves it. And then I'm going to stitch it just in this corner like this. But before I do that, I have to let this heal a little bit because it hurts. And I had a hard time embroidering this. There is backing fabric on this. I had a hard time pushing the needle through this. So I definitely am going to give it a couple days and let this finger heal a little bit first. So I made my first quilt. I love, I think I mentioned this before, I love controlling all of the layers of the fabric. So that's really great. Okay, I want to tell you one thing that doesn't matter, but I just want to tell you it's like a little PSA. Uh, we have hard water here at the cottage and also at our house. And I have been told many times by my hairdresser that I should get a water filter for my shower, which I don't know why I resisted, but I did. And I had noticed that since we moved from Cincinnati, my hair is not as curly as it usually is. And color is really dull. I finally just caved and I bought the water filter for my shower. Mr. Hansen installed it yesterday and look, it's already better. Like, it's amazing. So I just want to tell you, if you also are having a hard time with your shower, did you know that you can get a filter that just attaches to your current shower head and it filters just the water in your shower? So now I have that. My skin is already less itchy, itchy with just one shower. My hair already has made a difference, one shower. It feels a lot softer, which is good because it was super tangly and hard to get clean. And you know what's interesting actually is that my older daughter, her hair is really long and she was having a really tangly problem with it. So we bought her detangler and all this stuff. I wonder if the shower filter will make a difference. So I think I'm gonna have to spring for one at the house downstate as well. Last thing, this has been a hard season, I think for many of us, I think for most of us, I think even maybe for all of us, for whatever reason. And I just want to remind you that just because you carry it, no, I just, mm, this has been a hard season for many of us, for most of us, for all of us. And in an attempt to kind of focus on things that are a little better, I want to start talking to you about sharing some things. So I want to share one thing that you are appreciating or enjoying right now, even if it's very small. And I want to share one thing that you're looking forward to, even if it's really small. So 
I would like you to comment. I, I love or send me something on Instagram if you want, but I, I love community and I think we can help each other through this if we try. I think we're called to live in community and so this, that's what I want to do and it's, it's kind of fun to look forward to these things. So can I tell you what I am really enjoying and appreciating right now? I am right now enjoying and appreciating the Harney tea and I especially like the cinnamon, hot cinnamon spice I think it's called. It's so good and it just sits in your, it tastes a little bit sweet. I just seep it for five minutes. It doesn't need anything in it. I don't put creamer in it and I do sometimes like creamer in my tea but not that tea and I don't put any sugar in it. I usually don't but that one for sure just tastes sweet and it's really, really almost as good as hot chocolate is hot chocolate. So I'll say that. So I'm really enjoying that. And then one thing that I'm looking forward to is in the morning when I do my walks, the lake looks really beautiful. It's kind of this dark navy color and then sometimes there's cerulean in it. And I'm just seeing the hint of some blush of orange and some of the green that's turning just a little bit yellow. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the fall colors change this year. So thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope this wasn't too disconjointed. I did, ironically, most of the time, I don't have anything interrupting me, but today I had a couple of interruptions. So I hope that wasn't too bothersome for you all. And I hope that you're all looking forward to something and that you're enjoying something, no matter how small it is. I'm sending good vibes out to you. So thanks so much. And I hope you guys all have a really awesome 